Hello everyone. Um, once again, you're welcome to another live conversation with me, uh, your host, Nikki Verd. Yesterday, I, we had a conversation about imposter syndrome and I did promise that I would do another video today to deep dive or deep dive into the conversation, you know, and help us understand what this thing um, really is all about. And like I mentioned yesterday, it's a conversation that um, is really not as popular as I would want it to be. A lot of people are struggling with this and some people feel like they are alone on this journey, but you are not alone on this journey. This is something that I struggled with for the longest time. And to be honest, I didn't even know it was called imposter syndrome until I started um, looking into it, why I feel this way, right? And so today I want us to, I want to talk about, you know, how you can identify the imposter syndrome and how you can identify what it feels like, how you can identify and have a better understanding about what uh, what it entails. Like I mentioned in the previous video, you cannot win a battle you don't understand, right? So for me, uh, if you really want to overcome whatever you're struggling with, you need a deeper understanding on what that thing is really about. That is how you prepare for war. <laughs> so once again, you are welcome, and I hope that we'll have an interesting conversation as usual. So yes, imposter syndrome. If you're not careful, you can mistake it for humility, right? When people compliment you and praise you and you downplay and, and all of that, you might be thinking, no, or people might be thinking, no, he is just humble or she is just humble. No, it's 90% uh, of the time, maybe it's not humility. Okay. So you have to be very careful on how to identify this, this thing, you know, so, because like I mentioned yesterday, imposter syndrome is really a sense of um, feeling unworthy. When you see me looking on this side, I'm looking at my notes, okay? <laughs> so, imposter syndrome is really, you know, a constant sense of self-doubt and feeling unworthy of your accomplishments, feeling unworthy of your talents, feeling unworthy of a lot of things that you are good at, okay? And like I mentioned, some people might think they're just being humble by downplaying those uh, talents and those achievements. But it is really an imposter syndrome that if you don't pay attention to and fight, it can hinder you. It can hinder a lot of opportunities and a lot of growth, personal growth, you know. So uh, everybody feels inadequate at some point in their lives, okay? Um, but there is a persistence of inadequacy that comes with imposter syndrome. It's not just something you feel once in a while and then it is gone. No, with an imposter syndrome, it's, it's, it's a continual feeling of inadequacy. It's a continual feeling like you're not good enough. It's a continual feeling like uh, you don't belong here, you know. It's a continual feeling of like you are a fraud and things like that. So imposter syndrome, it causes people to doubt their own abilities and their accomplishments, you know, and it causes people to belittle their achievements. You know, if someone praises you for something big you did, you just, ah, don't worry about it, you know, or maybe you're just even wearing a nice outfit and someone compliments you and you're like, ah, oh, it costs nothing really. I got it on sale, you know, and you constantly downplay everything about you. So that then goes beyond the whole idea of, oh, everybody feels like this at some point in their lives. No, this one goes a step deeper, you know, when you are really dealing with an imposter syndrome and if you do not identify it and put a finger on it and start fighting it, it can really hinder you. And we don't want that, right? We want to be able to achieve uh, what God put us in this world to achieve. We want to be able to accomplish our dreams. We want to be able to make an impact in the world. We want to be able to make a difference in the world. And if you are not able to fight 
this imposter syndrome, you will find yourself stuck in a certain place or at a certain level for years and years and years. And you will co constantly explain why you are in that position, right? You constantly have a good reason why you are there. But the real reason really is that you are suffering from an imposter syndrome, okay? Um, don't always downplay your knowledge. Don't always downplay your talents. Don't always downplay your, your ability because that is really what... Um, an imposter syndrome is all about uh, when people hold you in high esteem and in high regard, it makes you very uncomfortable mm -hmm. and you are like, no, I don't do that. I, I don't I don't deserve that. Oh, that is, you know, think when you constantly explain those types of things away, there is a high chance that you probably struggling with um, an imposter syndrome. Like I said, this was something that it took a long time for me to actually same, you know, I think this is an imposter syndrome. <laughs> okay, I heard a story about Maya Angelou, you know, who knows Maya Angelou? You can leave a comment below, you know, if you've heard about, I'm sure there's no one here who doesn't really know about Maya Angelou, one of the greatest black women to ever live, in my opinion, you know, a writer, a legend, you know, a poet. And I heard a story about her that when she published one of her books, you know, when she was still alive, when she published one of her books, um, there was the, an idea, there was a thought she was dealing with that. She was feeling like, um, okay, maybe this is the time they finally figure out that she's been running the game. So she said, I think this is the time they finally figure out that I've been running a game. I mean, imagine Maya Angelou that we all respected while she was still here. And even now that she's no longer with us, we highly respect her legacy. And she had those feelings that they will discover. They will discover her that she will be found out as a fraud, that she will be found out that she, she'd been running a game because she didn't have that much confidence in her own book or in her own books, right? So this is something that comes to the best of us. High achievers, low achievers, whether you're still at the beginning of your game, if you do not attack imposter syndrome head on, it is going to keep you down. So it's, it's, it's not something like, okay, maybe this is just for a certain level of people or a certain class of people. It comes to everyone, you know. So there are some people that when I tell them, like I was say, sharing yesterday about me being an author or a writer, they, they, they sort of put me on this pedestal, right? Uh, I'm like, wow, you're an author, you're, you're a writer. Well, you must be very smart. But they don't understand how long it took for me to even be able to introduce myself as an author. I didn't feel like I deserved that title. I struggle with it. When someone asks me what I do or what I do for a living, I usually will try to move away from the conversation as quickly as possible so that I don't have to, I don't have to end up even talking about me being a writer or being a, an author, right? But I had to find a way to accept this is who I am. I am an author. I am a writer. I am a speaker. I had to find a way to embrace this is who I am, to accept it, to own it, right? But it was a journey that took a lot of service introspection. It's a journey, and I'm still on that journey, like I mentioned yesterday. Sometimes it feels like I'm not really winning this battle against imposter syndrome, but the self-awareness I've gained, it's really something I'm, I'm proud of. But I'm able to now accept and, you know, introduce myself as an author and as a writer without feeling uh, unworthy of that title, without feeling inadequate of that title. You know, I put a lot of work in my book. I put a lot of time, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of tears, a lot of research. I put in so much in that. So I'm getting to that point where I'm accepting that, yes, I am an author. I will not allow this imposter syndrome, you know, to steal that away from me, to steal away all the hard work or to take away all the hard work from me. So this is something that I really want us to pay attention to. And if it is something you're struggling with, then know that you are not alone. Okay. 
you are not alone. People who struggle with, with, with imposter syndrome, if someone tells them, oh, you're really smart, or you're really intelligent, then somehow they self-sabotage by al- avoiding anything that will reveal that they're smart or by avoiding anything that may reveal that they're not that smart, you know. So they avoid opportunities. Okay, they think I'm smart. What if I do this thing and fail? Then it will reveal that I'm really not that smart. And then they stop it. Like it, keep, it stops you right in your tracks. So that's what I'm saying. You need to be conscious of these thoughts. Catch them when they are right, when they're showing off their head, right? Catch them so that you can deliver yourself. You can free yourself from this monster, right? Otherwise, you will self-sabotage without even realizing it because you avoid opportunities because you don't want to be found out. You don't want to make a mistake. And then they will discover, oh, she's been pretending all along. Oh, he's been pretending all along. Those are the thoughts you constantly fight with. But this is is defeated. You know, it's something you can, you can... You can overcome. We can overcome together, you know. The damaging consequences of imposter syndrome, it makes it worth addressing it. It makes it worth addressing this topic. You know, the constant feeling of inadequacy can lead people to avoid opportunities that will let them grow and shine because they are like, no, what if I take this and then completely fail? Then I would have been exposed. No. And research has shown that um, there are two causes or the root causes of uh, imposter syndrome is actually comes from two environment, which is um, family, environment, and social pressure. That is really the root cause of imposter syndrome. You know, there are some families where everything is based on accomplishment or where maybe you grew up in that type of an environment where if you went to school and you did so well and maybe you spawned uh, 90% you got home and you were so happy and then you will be like, why didn't you score 100%, right? So <laughs> that type of pressure make people to find themselves in when they're adults struggling with these type of things, right? I heard a story of a, of a, of a, of a lady who told, was sharing the story about how her father uh, with a military background was so hard on them and demanded them to have straight A's and when they came home with straight A's and they worked so hard to get those straight A's, when they get home with straight A's, their father will ask them, the exams must have been really easy. Like, when with that type of feedback, people in adult, even as adult, you know, find themselves dealing with um, imposter syndrome because they feel like they're never good enough because whatever they did as kids was never good enough. If they had straight A's, it was because the exam was too easy. If they didn't have straight A's, it was because they were dumb, you know, and things like that. So that type of a family environment can breed, you know, these feelings of um, imposter syndrome in adulthood. So that is what our research shows where some of these things come from. So the other element of it is the social pressure. Maybe, you know, you or you belong in a group, a social group or an elite class where everything is entirely based on your accomplishment, right? Maybe you got an invite last year because you performed so well, maybe at work or whatever, and then your performance dropped and they completely excluded you from this elite function or these high class functions and you feel a sense of not belonging. You know, things like that can make people start feeling like they are not good enough because everything is based on performance. When you perform well, okay, you are recognized. If you fall a little bit, they treat you as if you don't exist. So those are the social environment and social pressure that can breed some of these things, right? So, um, and when we are aware of these things, then we can know how to fight them. And I mentioned that I will give or I will share six you know (laughs) i mentioned that i would share six ways to identify um or six signs to identify imposter syndrome and what it feels like and one of the ways to know that you are really struggling with imposter syndrome is undervaluing your contribution maybe at work maybe at home or wherever when you contributed to something you are, or you undermine it, you undervalue it. You know, I think I've already mentioned this when I was introducing the conversation. Uh, and then this, which results in a persistent sense of incompetence, you know, 
because of the imposter syndrome. So are you constantly undervaluing your contributions to society, your contributions at work, your contributions to your family, your contributions to your friends? Are you constantly undervaluing them when they appreciate you, when they praise you, you look at it like, oh, but I did nothing, oh, that was nothing. When you undervalue that, there is a chance you could be struggling with imposter syndrome. And the next uh, number two way to, number two sign to identify an imposter syndrome is that you attribute your success to external fa factors, <laughs> all right? Maybe because the weather was good. <laughs> That's why you did what you did, you know. So it's never you. It's always something else that happened. Maybe it's because you have good colleagues. That's why you're doing well at work. Maybe because you have a good boss. That's why you're doing well at work. It's never really you. So you constantly attribute your success to external factors. If that is you, then you may be struggling with an imposter syndrome. You know, it causes you to credit all of your achievements to situational factors beyond your be on your uh, your control, you know. It makes you attribute your success to everyone but you, to anything but you. You know, you're not that smart. You're like, oh, no, I can't take this. No, I didn't do it. So when you're constantly attributing your success to external factors, it's time to investigate why you're constantly doing that, okay? When someone gives you a compliment or some positive feedback, or when you get a promotion at work, you struggle to accept it, you know. You look at it as good luck. Oh, well, maybe this was just some good luck, some random thing that happened to you because of good weather or whatever. You know, maybe your boss did not find someone competent enough to promote and things like that. When you're constantly feeling like that, you may be struggling with imposter syndrome or you were, you were promoted and you accepted the promotion and suddenly you are like, I think soon I will be found. I think soon my boss will realize that the wrong person was promoted. <laughs> Those type of feelings. Those type of feelings, you know. It's time to investigate why you have them. Then just push them down. And the third point is that you, you, your continuous fear of not living, you continuously have this fear of not living up to expectations, right? That's one sign of uh, imposter syndrome. Uh, no matter what goals you set, an imposter syndrome will negate your ability to achieve them. It makes you feel as if you're not even worthy of those goals. A lot of us have many goals set for 2023, but how many people are really going to go after them? You know, you set those goals, you're ready, but suddenly you start feeling like, you're not worthy of this. You're not worthy to have this dream. Like you're not worthy to have this ambition. Like, um, you know, other people can achieve it, but not you. So your continuous fear of living up to your goals or following your dreams could be a sign of an imposter syndrome that you're dealing with. So investigate why you have this fear of not living your dreams, of not living your, your own uh, goals or expectations, right? And the fourth point is that, which is like a flip of what I've just explained, is it's setting unrealistic expectations. You know, from fear of setting your goals and going after them, you flip it the other way and you're setting unrealistic expectations for yourself. This comes from, you know, uh, the feeling of you're not good enough or your best is never good enough. So to overcome this and to overcome this overwhelming sense of incompetence and inability, you put too much pressure on yourself, you know. It pushes you to set unrealistic high standards to you're trying to make up for the feeling of inadequacy. You're trying to accommodate the feeling of, of inadequacy. And without even con being conscious about this, you set expectations mm -hmm. that no human can live up to, okay? So these are things to pay attention to and investigate. Why are you setting such high expectations for yourself? You know, you expect to deliver or achieve 100% all the time. You expect to deliver 100%, 100% of the time. I mean, no human can really do that. But you want to accomplish this to make up for your feelings of inadequacy. And even these impossible goals, when you set these impossible goals, let's assume that you actually 
achieve these impossible goals. Then suddenly you reject them. You're like, no, I think it was just luck. I, I can't be that smart. I couldn't have really done this. So be careful and, you know, just investigate why you have these feelings and pay attention to them so that you can be able to silence them. Like I mentioned earlier, you cannot fight a battle you don't understand. So when you have these feelings, ask yourself why. And when you start investigating, you might get to the roots of it and you might realize you're struggling with impost imposter syndrome. Okay, so the fifth one, which is really, I think, the most common, is self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. If you constantly self-sabotage, you can be, or you could, you, you're struggling from, you know, you're struggling with imposter syndrome. If you constantly self-sabotage, because imposter syndrome constantly reinforces these feelings of inadequacy, it pushes you to go out of your way to avoid anything that may expose you or expose your weaknesses, you know. Self-sabotage, you know, it, it, it forces you to avoid even opportunities that could elevate you because, but because you are afraid that you will be found out. You are afraid that you'll be discovered that you are not really that smart. You are afraid that you'll be discovered that you are not really that talented. Then you self-sabotage and you avoid the opportunity. You avoid an opportunity to grow. You avoid an op opportunity to take risks. You avoid an opportunity to take on challenges. And so you constantly self-sabotage and you give good reasons for why you're not doing this. You know, the self, this self-doubt, it causes you to apply less effort, less attention. It causes you to apply less creativity, less persistence. Like it's almost like you are holding everything or you're doing everything with two left hands. You're not giving in your best because you're like, I don't want to be found out. That is self-sabotage, and that is one of the key areas that uh, imposter syndrome holds, you know, have a hold on people. They constantly self-sabotage. There's an opportunity, but you explain it away. You know, you avoid it because you are afraid that if you fail, then you will really be exposed. Then the world will really, really know that you are not that smart to begin with. That is imposter syndrome. And that is why it's important and necessary to address this before it takes over your life completely, before it takes over my life completely. Like I'm saying, we are all struggling with this, right? But one, one way to overcome this self-sabotage is to understand that your dream is the qualification you need. Your purpose is the qualification you need. You don't need any other qualification, okay? The fact that you have that dream, the fact that you want to go after that thing, that is the qualification you need. That's all. That's all. The fact that you want to make a difference in the world, that is the qualification you need. The fact that you want to impact the world, that is the qualification you need. The fact that you are passionate about that job, that position, that organization, that is the qualification you need. Don't sabotage yourself by running away from those opportunities. Don't sabotage yourself by running away from your dreams because you're thinking the world is finally going to discover how, maybe how dumb you really are. No, you are qualified. You are qualified for that dream. You are qualified for that, um, that goal you are setting for yourself next year. You are qualified for it. You can do it. That is, that is the qualification you need, the dream you have. The dream you have is the qualification you need. And no one can do it better than you. No one can execute it better than you. So please don't self-sabotage. Even if you are afraid, still do it. Even if your hands are shaking, step out there and do it. The best of humans feel this fear. But they feel the fear and they do it. So that was the fifth point. Number six is that... An imposter syndrome oppressed through this mindset, which I think is a dangerous mindset, right? But it also oppressed through this mindset of never ask for help, never let them see you sweat. Because if they do, then you've been exposed. Let me repeat that again. An imposter syndrome also oppressed through this mindset. Never let them see you struggle. Never let them see you sweat. Never ask for help. Because if they ever see you struggle, then you have been exposed. 
and then people are dying inside. People are struggling to do things because they are afraid to ask for help. Like it will expose them. Because asking for help means that uh, you are inadequate. That is how imposter syndrome tricks your mind to think. Showing any sign of weakness. Instead of seeing it as you embracing your humanity, as you being human, imposter syndrome convinces you that if you show any sign of weakness or any sign of failure, then you are truly a failure. And so you just bottle everything up. So if you recognize yourself in any of these patterns that I've been describing um, or any of the behaviors that I have been describing, then you can start working to overcome them. If you identify yourself maybe on one or two or all of them, then we have work to do, okay? We have work to do. The most important thing is that you have the knowledge, you gain the knowledge, and you start understanding how to fight this battle because you cannot win a battle you don't understand. So if imposter syndrome is left unchecked, it will hinder every aspect of your life. It's going to hinder your relationships. It will hinder your work. It will hinder your business. It will hinder progress in your life. And imposter syndrome can lead to a feeling of frustration because you're constantly feeling like you can do more, you can give more to the world, but you are being held back. You know, you're holding yourself back from giving more to the world, from from evolving as a person, from growing. And these constant feelings, you know, can lead to frustration, can lead to shame, can lead to depression and a very low self-esteem. That th Those are the dangers of, or the dark side of an imposter syndrome, right? If, you, if it's left unchecked, if you don't put your finger on it and say, okay, it's me and you, we're going to deal with this, you know? So the best way to start fighting this, is to own it, right? Yesterday, I said that um, there's an affirmation that I always use, which as when I started working on myself in regards to this imposter syndrome, I constantly use this affirmation, right? That nothing is too good for me, okay? And another way that I want to recommend for us to fight this is to own it. What is it you think you're good at? Own it, own it, own the talent, own your success, own your achievements on your looks, on how you look, on your accomplishments and all of your achievements, on your English, you know, on all of them, embrace all of them, on them. There are some black people that when they speak English a certain way, then people start accusing them of being white on the inside and black on the outside. <laughs> and before they know it, they start holding themselves back. If you have that, you know, uh, Queen's English, speak it, own it, okay? On all of your talents. That is the best way to combat imposter syndrome head on. If you're constantly running away from your brilliance, imposter syndrome will hold, it would hold you hostage. But if you are, you know, accepting and embracing your brilliance, your talents, then imposter syndrome will not have the front seat in your life. You will still have those voices, of course. You cannot completely win the battle against imposter syndrome, but the self-awareness you can develop and create, you know, it will lead you to places. So on the talent, on all of it, on your brilliance, on it, on your academic qualification, on your promotion at work, on your whatever it is. You know, I cannot name everything, but you know, you know what is it that you are brilliant at, just on it. That is the best way or one of the best way to beat um, the imposter syndrome, okay? Stop running away from your talents. Stop running away from what you're good at. You cannot win this battle by, by tirelessly trying to achieve impossible standards, okay? Stop trying to achieve impossible standards. Stop sabotaging yourself, you know, stop hiding but you need to accept who you are, that you are brilliant, you are good, you are gifted, you are talented, own all of it, okay? Understand that your gift, your talent, 
your dreams is all the accomplishment, is all the qualification you need. And with that being said, let me know in the comment section which of uh, these um, signs resonates with you more and which part of the conversation resonated with you more. You can share with me in the comment section. Hi, Peter Schneider. Thank you for being here. The Beto Media, thank you for being here. I appreciate you watching and everyone watching and those that will watch are. Uh, the recorded uh, version of this. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And for those who can send me, um, what is it called? Stars. <laughs> I will welcome stars. So if you're able to send me stars for this live, I will very much appreciate it. So thank you once again for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next live video. Bye.